Hey folks, how's it going? It's Solar Spark here. And today we're going to be doing another subscriber decided election video. And this time it's going to be in 1876 between Samuel J. Tilden and James G. Blaine. So this was requested and this won't have the mulligan letters um, in this scenario. So we're going to do this one. Uh, you're going to decide it and I'm going to make some comments on your calls and you should tell me why you're making these calls in the, in the chat so that I can follow along and just give you my critique based on what was going on at that time during that election and that campaign during that year. So just a little bit of background about um, the Mulligan letters. So something that really hurt Blaine's candidacy was that Blaine really used his official powers to really promote uh, the railroads. So it was kind of really not allowed during that time to do that because it was seen as a conflict of interest and Blaine lost a lot of public support and it costed him the nomination a few times. Um, and also, they say in 1884, when he did get the nomination, the publication of these letters really contributed to his loss uh, because it hurt his reputation as he was seen as uh, not having enough integrity. So in this timeline, the Mulligan letters aren't released or they don't happen. And Blaine's credibility is left intact, so... This doesn't detract from that whatsoever. So there are no Mulligan letters. And it's Tilden versus Blaine, Blaine in um, 1876. So a little bit earlier in this timeline. Uh, he would get the nomination a little bit sooner. So without further ado, we're going to get into this one. Going to... Share my screen so that you can see the map here. I had to use 270 to win uh, because the other site was not working today. So I'm going to share my screen for the map here. This is Tilden versus Blaine again. This is 1876. So you can be you can begin making um, state calls when you're ready to do that. And Blaine had a long career um, as well. Blaine had a really long career as Secretary of State, U.S. Senator from Maine, Speaker of the House. So he served in both, both houses of uh, Congress, and he was Secretary of State. Um, Blaine really had to deny a lot of his uh, dealings with these railroad companies. Something really important to note is that the Midwest at this time in New England were extremely Republican, uh, fiercely for the gold standard, high tariffs. The Democrats had some uh, support among immigrant populations, the unions, uh, business interests tended to support the Republicans at this time. Uh, Democrats tended to be more progressive, starting to uh, head into the progressive era. This is um, part of the Gilded Age, technically, but then it turns into the progressive era. So this is right on the cusp here, but um, a lot of the Republican candidates, again, had a lot of support in the cities and the suburbs. Um, Tilden was from New York. He was a reformer there. 
as well. Told him want to reform as well. He wanted to get civil service reform done. In 1876. And that was a big issue. So I'm just waiting for you guys to settle in and make some calls. And I'll see if I could see the chat here. All right, I'm just seeing the chat. Sorry about that. Um, the chat wasn't working correctly. So Monopoly here, we see uh, Maine, Vermont, Iowa, Michigan. Okay. Home state advantage. All those states will go R. The entire South, except South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, go D. Uh, so similar to um, the actual election, uh, Blaine was pro-reconstruction. Colorado goes Republican. All right, so Kenny Fanboy says Maine, Vermont, Iowa, uh, Michigan, Rhode Island, Kansas, Nebraska, Michigan, uh, Minnesota, and Wisconsin go to Blaine. So we're going to fill those in. Maine as well was his home state. Uh, Rhode Island, Kansas, Nebraska. And Iowa. Colorado as well. And I could see the appeal for uh, Republicans in these Western states that they supported the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, they were strong with the railroad interests. Whereas the Democrats really wanted unionization and uh, trying to interfere with some of these uh, business affairs in the Midwest, which really weren't popular. Uh, and a lot of these states tend to be more conservative in uh, business. And that's probably true. Blaine might actually do better than Hayes. Possibly. Blaine uh, would get Oregon, California, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Okay. So, Nebraska as well. So, he's at 124 based on those calls. And I agree with these calls so far. I think Blaine would do well among the conservatives in the, um, in the Midwest there. And then in the West because of the railroad position. I think Tilden would be competitive in some of the the upper south and uh, the northeast. So I'll see what your calls are for those. I'm very eager to hear those. I 
And New York, uh, told him was from there. It's pretty democratic. Uh, New York City and the uh, surrounding areas are pretty democratic. Upstate New York would definitely go Republican. A lot of the rural areas would definitely go Republican as well. I think Tilden would have some support in the suburbs in New York. But I'll let you make that call. After all, this is a subscriber-decided election. The rum, Romanism, or rebellion, right? That was a scandal uh, in that election, in the 1884 election. Tilden gets Texas. I'm going to say Tilden probably gets New York, too. So Tilden would get Texas and New York so far. He would get, okay, so he would also get Connecticut, he actually won Connecticut in the in the 1876 election, so he'd probably hold on to it here. And Cleveland, as well as Tilden and uh, some other moderate Democrats, were more friendly to, to gold than uh, the Bryan uh, wing. I was actually surprised to read to this. isn't really related to uh, this election, but later on with uh, Woodrow Wilson, I found it surprising that he didn't support William Jennings Bryan because he was perceived to be uh, too radical. So Tilden really strikes me as like one of those moderate reformers, not really a progressive. I'd say like a moderate reformer or something like that. So New Jersey and Virginia go to Tolden. So New Jersey and Virginia, right? Virginia, very heavily Democratic. New Jersey and New York, pretty progressive states that want reform, right? New Hampshire maybe barely goes Blaine. It's definitely possible. New Hampshire is very close um, in the actual 1876 here, or so New Hampshire probably goes to Blaine. I agree with that. Illinois was fairly close, uh, but Hayes won the collar counties around Chicago, so that tipped the state, while uh, Tilden did better in downstate Illinois. Uh, here we have Arkansas, Missouri go to Tilden. Tennessee, Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina. All right, I agree with those. Tilden getting close here. Right, Blame was from Ohio. Yeah, he would probably get Illinois. Massachusetts depends on the Irish vote, absolutely. Uh, there were a lot of immigrant populations that were a factor in some of these elections. So um, I think that would favor uh, Tilden because a lot of uh, Irish uh, tended to be Catholic. Um, and the Blaine Amendment was perceived as being pretty anti-Catholic. So that might, who knows, that might tip the uh, balance in Tilden's favor for Massachusetts. But again, this is a... This, Subscriber decided election. 
the border states of Maryland and D. Uh, sorry, Delaware. Go to Tolan. So this is close, folks. This is a close one. And the actual election was extremely, extremely, very close. So a few states left here. We have Massachusetts, West Virginia, Indiana, Louisiana, South Carolina, and Florida. And Hayes had to cut some deals to win some of the southern states. Indiana, we go to Tolden. It was a pure swing state. We voted with states like New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey. Indiana also goes to Tolden. And he's on the cusp here with three states left. Uh, I believe the state legislatures at this time controlled. Um, a, lot of these, a lot of those southern states that voted for Hayes. He did win the popular vote, Tilden. West Virginia and Massachusetts go Tilden. Massachusetts would probably go to Tilden. He would win um, due to that because of the Irish vote. I think um, here... I mean, I mean, I agree with that. Again, I think due to uh, Blaine, with the Blaine Amendment, would have hurt him with the Irish vote. So uh, a lot of immigrants would have not voted for Blaine. And Tilden's at 192. And then we have, don't forget about Nevada out here. We have Nevada, West Virginia, and South Carolina. And they all go to Blaine, Nevada, Blaine. That's probably true. South Carolina going to Blaine. Uh, Nevada probably probably goes red though. It was I think it was competitive. It was pretty competitive in the actual election. Almost tied. But Hayes ended up winning, so it'll probably go Republican. And then last is West Virginia. West Virginia goes Blaine. West Virginia is a toss-up. So West Virginia would go Blaine, and that would be it. So Tilden would win narrowly over uh, James Blaine. And this one, according to your prediction here, and the subscriber decided election, Samuel J. Tilden, 192 electoral votes. And James G. Blaine, 177 electoral votes. I might disagree with that, Kenny Fanboy. Uh, Tilden was fairly popular. I think Blaine would actually do worse than Hayes in the uh, national popular vote. I think he might do a little bit worse. And now uh, the populated areas uh, because of his image, despite not having the mulligan letters, uh, some other things would bring him down um, and that would utterly cause his, uh, his demise here in this election. Right. He'd have the, he'd probably have the support of the, uh, the big machines, the party machines in Philly, Chicago as well. But in the end, he probably would fall short. I agree with this prediction, though. He would probably fall short uh, because, again, of his reputation. And he was definitely qualified. He was 
Blaine was definitely qualified to be president. Because of his some of his, some of his um, foreign policy ideas might have been popular uh, in terms of expansionism in certain areas, right? But the Blaine Amendment was pretty negative. Blaine again, yeah, he was a good speaker in the uh, as speaker of the House. He was pretty soft on the former Confederates. Uh, they were a bunch of moderate reformers, right? So uh, Blaine was another reformer, but not popular enough. Definitely not popular enough to not win the popular vote here. I think Tilden would win the popular vote like he did in the actual election. And Tilden would be elected here. Probably would get two terms. But that really is all, folks. That wraps it up. So Tilden versus Blaine, and Tilden comes out victorious here. Very narrowly. But again, I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, I know these have been shorter videos, but be sure to leave your suggestions down below for uh, upcoming scenarios. Would appreciate that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Follow the social media and the podcast as well. Um, I'm going to probably put these into a series. And we'll do these pretty often. Um, it seems like you guys enjoy them. So I'll be sure to do that for you. Uh, so 1864 Burnside versus McClellan. That would definitely be interesting. And then Robert Todd Lincoln versus um, or with Cleveland. All right. Interesting scenarios. Uh, tomorrow will probably be the about the uh, Chinese origin of COVID nineteen. And we're going to probably be talking about the origin of the virus, uh, some of the things that have been going on in the news. Probably be talking about that tomorrow afternoon. So stay tuned for that. And uh, Okay, 1860, Lincoln versus Douglas with no Breckenridge or Bell. I've done a scenario like that before with Link, I believe, with Lincoln versus Breckenridge. But I could definitely look into Lincoln versus Douglas with uh, no others. Did I do that one already? Or I think I did it with just Breckenridge, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I'll note those folks. But again, uh, all right, I've done both, so I won't do that one. Um, I could do Bell versus Lincoln.
All right. I believe I did. All right. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to leave it there, folks. That's really all I have. I appreciate those suggestions. I'll do those. I'll be sure to do those um, in the future. But again, thanks for watching. That's all I have for now. And this is Stellar Spark signing off, folks. See you guys next time.